Hey everybody, Andre here, and today I'm going to show you how to create a Schenker graph in Sibelius Ultimate. Um, so basically, I was asked, uh, you know, is there an easy way to do this in Sibelius? And uh, of course there is. So I'm going to take you through all of the process of making this happen. I just want to show you uh, an example that I'm going to kind of follow. So here we have the, an original piece of music. Um, I think it's just Schubert, probably. Uh, and then we have underneath it, we have the, the Schenker graph um, that tells us the analysis. I'm not going to tell you what Schenker analysis is. I'm just going to literally show you how to do this in Sibelius. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to mimic the score. So basically we have the piano part, we have a soprano part, and then we have a treble clef part for... Um, for the Schenker graph. So here we go. We're going to set up the document. You go to New Score. I'm just going to scroll down to Piano just because it's already part of the thing. Change Instruments. I'm going to type in Soprano. I'm going to find the Soprano voice. Add that. I'm going to bring it up. Uh, and then I'm going to find uh, Unnamed Trouble Staff. Kind of easy that way. Okay, cool. And uh, if we look, it looks like it's in 4 4. It looks like it's in G flat major. Uh, so we're going to do that. So 4-4, four, four, fine. G flat major. Perfect. Uh, and then you can, of course, you can title your stuff however you want, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, I don't know why Allegretto's here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need it. So the first thing you want to do is you actually, well, it's three bars long, right? One, two, three bars long. So I'm going to delete everything else from the score. I don't care about it. I don't want to see it. So to do that, I'm literally holding Control or Command if you're on a Mac. Hold Control or Command and then press Delete, and then you're prompted with this. And then you just delete all that. Okay, so the first thing, I'm going to move it over to my other monitor so I can just copy it over. Um, so the top part, uh, we're typing in the soprano voice. So you can have this keypad down here. I am going to use my mouse to start, and then I'm going to use just mouse and keys to really quickly go through and do it. And notice how fast it really works if you just use the keyboard. Cool. And then we're going to just put a rest over this or a fermato over that. And we're going to have to delete these probably. Uh, yeah, we'll do it afterwards. So then we're going to do the bass clef of the piano, because I feel like that's a little easier. G, B, D, G, B, D, half note, G, down the octave, octave. To do a quick octave, you hold down shift and you press eight, and that makes a note octave below. If you want to do a octave above, you just press eight. Uh, and then, same thing. Okay, sweet, so now we're gonna do the treble clef. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do it a little bit differently just because we have repeated chords. So I'm just going to copy and paste. It's going to be a little faster that way. Um, here I'm going to do D and a fourth above. C for third. And... Now we're going to want two different voices. So I'm going to do dotted quarter up on top here, and then lower voice I'm going to do, and then slur it up to quarter note. And I'm going to remove these just for good measure. And then, again, we're going to need two voices up here, dotted quarter note, and then And then here we're going to do eighth note. And then I can actually just copy and paste these and slur those together. Whoops. Slur those together. It's not cooperating right now, but that's all right. Um, so next, uh, I want to put in, so let's compare and contrast here. I think I've done a pretty OK job. Yep, we can add in the text if we want. We can add in the dynamics. Uh, might as well do that. Okay, so we're going to just really quickly, just for the sake of life. By the way, when you add dynamics, 
uh, you press uh, Control E, and then you can type in the expression text. D crash. Uh, and if you want your dynamics to actually sound in the Sibelius playback, you want to make sure that you continue holding Control when you do it. So I'm going to show you what happens if you Control E, and then P. And then it's just a regular P. In previous versions of Sibelius, it wouldn't uh, play in the playback as piano, but in Sibelius Ultimate, it actually doesn't matter. But uh, if you're using like Sibelius 6 or something, you definitely want it to be bolded. Uh, and anything else that I'm missing? Accent here, uh, accent, accent, and Fermati, of course. Fermata, Fermata. And then we're going to put one over there. All right, and we're going to hide this one. Okay, anything else I'm missing? I'm missing a slur. I'm missing a slur here. Uh, and then, of course, I, I'm, we're, we're going to sort out the slur later. Okay, I'm going to type now the text here. So Control or Command L, and we get lyrics. Umalt, want to make sure I get that in. For that, I literally just right clicked. I, I, I went, I went, click the note, Control L or Command L. I typed in my S first, then I right mouse button, brings up this nice menu, and then I clicked on the Umalt. Uh, then I'm gonna press the hyphen. Sir Frieda, and then Com Ah. And then calm in mine brust. Uh, and if you see here in the original, the text kind of is split like that. Uh, so the 16th notes are split and the 8th notes are split. If we're going to be just really, uh, if you see on the keypad, there's this third menu. You can split them like that. Kind of handy. This is an old-fashioned way of writing text. Don't particularly like it, but now it looks exactly, exactly like the source example. So now we're gonna have to be a little bit creative. So if you look at the original source material, you see that the shaker graph itself doesn't have bar lines, first of all, and uh, the the, the note values, it, it doesn't quite add up to what we're looking for. So we're going to have to trick this. And there's an easy way and there's a hard way. And the hard way is to, you know, create different time signatures and, and hide stuff and have this all kind of lined up. But I don't want to do that because I, it's, you know, time is money. So what we're going to do first is we're going to click on this final bar line over here. And we're going to go to layout and then we're going to hit system break. Okay. Then we're going to click on this last bar, and then I'm going to hold down Control Shift B or Command Shift B. That will create a bar after this. You can also, because there's only there were only three bars, you could have me undo this. You could just hit Command B or Control B, and that'll put a bar at the end. But uh, the first one will put it exactly where you want, but Control B or Command B will only put it at the end. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work with this only. So just for a moment, I'm going to take these top three and I'm going to stay in layout. I'm going to hit hide staves. So now, as you can see, this next bar, we only are dealing with the one treble part. And similarly, we're going to take this line and we're going to hide that too. And so now it kind of looks like we're dealing with one thing. I'm going to go ahead and hide this measure number as well. Okay, so now we have to sort out the how we're going to line this up. Well, if you can see, we have three bars of 4-4. Four, four, so we need 12 quarter notes in total to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T for time signature. And I'm going to hit more options. On other, I'm going to find 12 quarter notes. And very importantly, you want to make sure that allow cautionary has been switched off. And the reason for this, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. So if you allow the cautionary, it creates this time signature at the end of the previous system. And we don't want that because it looks kind of ugly. 
Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go and create one without a cautionary. So now obviously you want to hide this because you don't want to see that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these three layers together. Okay, we're gonna put these three layers together. So the first one I'm gonna do the bottom one first. So the bottom one we have a. I'm gonna just hit layer three. I'm gonna hit the G flat down here. So now we want to make sure that we have a beam here, right? Well, let's take a step back, actually. Let's finish all the layers, and then we'll do it. So we have kind of like, we have the bottom layer. Now let's do the top layer. So I'll use voice one for that. We have this B flat. Okay, so we have the top line, we have the bottom line. Now we need the middle line. So this is going to be a little bit more cumbersome. For that note, and then I'm actually going to you're probably wondering, well, why are you using 16th notes? I'll explain in a sec. Okay. So if we take a look at the source material, we had we have now all the different layers that we're working with, okay? So now let's try to sort out the, the beaming situation. And we'll start with the middle voice first. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove these stems, okay? So we're going to go to notation, we're gonna to go to type, and we are going to remove the stems. So easy. So once again, that's in notations, type, and you go down to special and you want to make it say stemless. Okay, so then after that, you want to have a slur here. So that's above. And we're gonna just go ahead and delete all these extra all these extra rests. Just get them out of there. Because they're just cluttering everything. Okay. So all the extra rests are gone. Actually, we're going to keep those last ones in there just because it helps uh, the spacing. So then what I want to do, so we have the top part. We need this invisible line. So we're going to go to L for lines. We're going to find this dashed slur, dotted slur. We're going to do it below. And then I'm going to connect it over to that note. That looks pretty close. This B flat needs to have a stem in that direction. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Find the stem. I'm just going to make it go up a little bit. All right. That's great. I'm going to make the stem go up a little bit as well. All right. So now what we need to do is we have to have these giant beams. So I'm going to start with uh, so giant beams. You see how, you know, big beam there, big beam there. So I'm going to extend these stems until they're all kind of level with each other. And I will zoom in in just a sec. And now it looks like we need just need a big line. So I hit L and we're gonna find beam. Great, we're gonna just set it down right there. And I'm just gonna zoom in a lot. So notice how I'm trying to connect it, but it doesn't work, right? So very importantly, you wanna make sure that you right click it and then make magnetic layout off. Okay. So now you can connect it just fine. And I'm going to extend this. And if you don't want that to happen, you can just actually click that green box and then hold control and then hit the right mouse button. And that way you don't have to worry about the angle. And if you just hit left instead of control, it just goes a little bit shorter. So now you can see that I need to extend this one a little bit. And I'm just using the arrow keys, just moving it down. And this one needs to go up a little bit. Look at that. Now we have a big old beam. Uh, awesome. So instead of going back to the uh, line menu, I can just click that. Command C or Control C. Copy and paste and put it up here. And now I'm just going to extend these a little bit. Extend these lines. And we're going to adjust them in a sec. 
and I could just move that over. And then you can see, you know, the micro adjustments that you need to make in order to have it be perfectly lined up. But it's not that big of a deal. And so if you check it out now, that looks like that looks like a shanker graph, man. That looks pretty darn good to me. So we want to just make sure everything's lined up. Let's see. How can we do this? We have to slide this over probably. Yep. Look at that. And this is reasonably well lined up. Obviously, you can still you can scrunch these more as you see fit. Uh, but you kind of you kind of get the point. You can you can uh, adjust these as you need in order for have it uh, in order to have it line up. Um, and so the last piece of the puzzle here is we have these uh, this text here. So right below, I'm gonna put uh, lyric one. I guess it doesn't really matter if you use text or whatever. I'm gonna actually use text because it'll probably be easier. One. Uh, if you use text instead of lyrics, it won't uh, it won't fidget it's it around uh, down here I'm gonna put another one I'm gonna change this to five and then have one okay so that looks pretty good and then here I'm gonna do the same exact thing put it above control V put this one above and we want to put a three down and I'm looking for carrots so there's probably an alt command that you can use here um, but I'm just gonna do it the way that I know so three what are we looking for two and one okay so two over here two and one over here and so the way that I know how to do it is uh, you hit Z which brings up your symbol menu and you can try to find the correct symbol, which is that upward sign, lift. That looks pretty close. And again, I want to just make sure I turn off magnetic layout. There we go. Three. I, I just copied and pasted so I don't have to do the magnetic layout again. This object that I've copied already has it. That looks pretty close. Ah, it's the wrong kind of it's the wrong kind of thing. I wonder if I can find a better one. Whoops. I wonder if I can find a better one. Or whether I just use Oh, you know what? You know what's just better? If I just hit that, this control T up arrow like that. That should be good. Magnetic layout off way better yeah we're gonna just replace them we're just gonna replace them every time you delete it sets you back to the previous measure it's really annoying oh look how much better that looks all right so i'm gonna zoom out and you can kind of see we did just did a shanker graph and if you go to uh, print preview check that out uh it looks pretty good so how long did that take? That took us like, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, not even. So pretty easy. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, you can see that we can do a little bit more work. We can take this G, G flat F, E flat, D flat. We can line that up better with the, the, the voice, obviously. Um, but, you know, for the work that we did, I think this is pretty good. So I hope that was a useful tutorial for you. I hope uh, you're able to now make your Schenker graphs. Uh, it's uh, not that hard, right? Just not need to know where to click and uh, the little nuances to get there. So I hope that was useful for you. Uh, if you like this video, please do hit that like button and uh, you know subscribe to the channel if you want to see uh, see more stuff. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.